This week on Lucky Fish, we learn what happened to some British exiles after the War of Independence. Mick explains the game reel. Sound going on? We say a special thank you to our subscribers. Yeah, it's yep. a family. It's a, you make your own family in this world now through social media. Yes. And Mick sounds the handmade conch as we bid him farewell. I did a lot, a lot when I was a kid. Yesterday afternoon we came over from Georgetown and anchored here at Little Crab Key. It's a really sweet little anchorage. It's blowing up to 25 knots southeast last night and during today. And we met Clark and Emily who have a YouTube channel called Emily and Clark's Tiny Adventure. And uh, they're anchored out there with us on their mono. And so I was asking Clark at the moment what these ruins are that we've come across. Not the ruins of the failed tourist development behind us, but these ruins predate it by quite some years. These were American plantation owners who supported the King of England during the Revolutionary War. And after the war, uh, they were met at their door by people that said, you liked the King, we're taking you back to England. They had a very short amount of time to pack up whatever they wanted, including their slaves, put them on a ship that was supplied and brought to England. That was defined by 70 miles away, right here. And they, they uh, moved here, uh, tried to grow crops, failed miserably, and became Bohemians. And I guess they fish. <laughs> uh, how do you know all these stories? <laughs> uh, there's this Bohemian storyteller guy. I think he works mostly with cruise ships and stuff. Anyway, he told me this story. What can you see down there? Beautiful view they had. Beautiful one. I don't know why they would abandon this nice spot. It's interesting how they built it. As you can see, this is a limestone they used and some kind of cement maybe they made and some rocks and wood. Pretty impressive to see those dry stone walls still standing after well over 200 years. I don't know, we're stuck in the jungle. What is stuck in us, really? Alright. <laughs> oh, we can tie ourselves here. See that bird? Is it hurricane season yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be a pretty good spot. This guy, apparently, his anchor's dragged. Didn't work out well for him.
So Mick, do you mind telling us about the game reel that you've been using? Okay, yeah, sure, no problem. This is one of my game reels I brought. So here's obviously the, the handle to reel with. Here's the where you adjust the drag tension. This lever is what you use when you're letting it's, it kind of releases the, the tension and then the line easily go out for pilking or if you're going for trolling or whatever, just let the line out and then you take it back to here and that, that's a kind of a stop here. And then you should have the proper tension. Then sometimes when we troll, I have another trick and then I use the level like here. And uh, then I can have a, a little bit more tension here, but here on the other side it is released. And then uh, I put this, uh, I don't know what you use, it makes a lot of sound when it's on. And that's good because then I have a lot of things, uh, what do you say, a lot of resources in reserve when the fish is hooked. So then I hear this sound going on and then I run to the reel if I'm not holding it and then I immediately turn this tension up. Then I know here's the good drag and it should be excellent for, for reeling. If, and I, of course I start reel then, and I, uh, most times I take the sound off and I do the reeling and so uh, sometimes you forget, sometimes it's fun to have it if there is a real fighter on, on the hook and, and it's rushes or doing things and, and then it kind of adds for the adrenaline kick to keep the sound on. And then I have a num uh, this knob here, I can just press it and then I can do the lever all the way and then I really lock it if there is a real fight going on and I don't have the time to adjust here because I mean I use my one hand here, I use the other one for, for uh, reeling in and then it's quite easy to just uh, make a really tough... So the drag is off at that, that point? No, it's totally, I mean, no, totally there, off. yes, yeah. oh yeah, it's locked. Yeah. yes, okay. almost, and, and uh, mm -hmm. you have to be careful, of course, because there is a lot of stress to your rod, so you have to be careful with that, but sometimes, you, I mean, you can use it half the way up, and, or whatever, but uh, at least you, you have got a, quite a quick access to really much tension, if needed, but mostly it's ne not necessary in most fishes and, and for the barras I mean they are kind of fun when they fight and jump and they don't really need much tension. So. Well that's great Mick, thanks very much for that overview of the uh, game fishing reel. Give it away Mick. You're gonna have to wait till the next sunset. really good that there's 10,000 people out there yes, who, man. who would be moved by our story to click subscribe, that's what it is, and uh, uh, it's nice to be that part of that community yeah. and meet these people, it's awesome. Sure. And I reckon they really like to meet you as well. Yeah, it's yeah. a family, it's a, you make your own family in this world now through social media. Yes. And, uh, Anyone can do it, you know, you find your niche and yeah, it's so rewarding and so, I don't know, heartwarming. So now you two guys are kind of rock stars. Oh, yeah. Well, that's actually what it's all about. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, the reason that we do it is so that all of our friends will envy us. Um, that's very important. Um, we want to make more videos. I have a question. <laughs> Sorry do you about think that. you found your niche? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I knew it was there. We just had to do a lot of changes in life to get back to it. There's, you know, there's a wonderful community of sailors and, and wannabe sailors it's out there that me. share the same principles and same hopes in life. And you know, I think that's marvellous to be able to be part of it. <laughs> Yes, we're doing a short little fine tuning of this hair. Wow, very nice work. As I try to make it like this so they are not all 
cut sharp like even because then it doesn't look natural no, it looks wonderful and uh, this way i always do with a women's haircut uh, because it's kind of yes you, oh, you have to be quite skilled i mean you're in good hands very sensitive so everyone is happy yes i'm on a, a rocky boat like this <laughs> we have to Take care where your tools are. The sun dried my hair. Yeah. And uh, the end of it got very frizzy. Yeah. Uh, do we have another mirror as well? Mm. So I can show you the how it looks from, from behind. Now you're looking, checking your mirror and I shall try to, if you put it like a little bit to the side or not that much, like that. And I shall try to line this up. Can you see? <laughs> I used to do this uh, imitating the cuckoo when I was a kid. And I, I really had this experience with uh, making the cuckoos angry. And uh, I could like, doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. and they, they came, they came uh, quite close, and I was up, making them upset with my kind of cuckoo, and it was really fun. But now it seems like, well, it is ages ago. <laughs> Yeah, well, farewell, Mick. It was great having you on board, and we hope we can do it again. Don't miss next week when the weather turns foul and we push off for Cuba and Guatemala. We have a couple of very big announcements coming up in the next few weeks. They are not all about us, they are about you. Opportunities for you to realise your sailing dreams. And you can be the first to know by becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a video. Thanks everyone for watching.